Hi everyone, so here it is, the video that I've been dying to publish, the review of the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X, which is the second generation AMD Ryzen CPU. So more details right after this. Alright, so we are back. So let me uh, clarify that in this video, I'll be covering the performance of the Ryzen 7 2700X, but I will not be touching about the, the aspects of overclocking just yet because I, I want to spend a bit more time on it before coming to my conclusions. So uh, let's cut to the chase, the performance. How does the 2700X perform? Check out the benchmarks here. you see that the performance over the 1800X is good. Uh, from my calculations, it's on the average is about 12% improvement. So the performance gain is somewhere around 10 to even nearly 20%. Now that's uh, really nice for the Ryzen 7 2700X. When it comes to gaming performance, I test it with uh, 1080p over various titles as you can see here. So what I've um, found out compared to the 1800X is there's slight improvement on the average frame rate and overall much improvement over the minimum frame rates. So from the benchmarks alone, you can see that this is a great processor. It has some 12% um, improvement on average over the 1800X based on my test, but the beauty is not that. The beauty is that it retails at RM 1,559, which unlike the 1800X at that time, retail at 2,599. That is um, if you still, you can't, um, if you don't get the difference, let me tell you. So the 2700X here is around 60% of the introductory price of the 1800X. So you are get paying just 60% of it and you get additional performance. and. Let's not forget that it come, this one comes with a cooler. Remember, the 1800X does not come with any cooler, but the 2700X here comes with a Wraith Prism, which is a higher model cooler, even compared to the Wraith Max, of which I reviewed earlier. You can uh, click on the link above. So, this uh, cooler is awesome. Seeing that the build quality that it comes with the RGB and the cooling capacity, it performs silently it's worth at least RM200. So if you minus off the price of say RM200 from the selling price, the processor alone is just about half the price of the 1800X. And speaking of the cooler, um, I'll give, I have another separate video for the cooler itself, but here's the cooling performance on uh, the Wraith Prism against the 2700X. And as you can see, the 2700X runs really hot. In, Based on what I observed, the voltage fluctuates from like 1.3 to 1.5 V core, which is really high. The 2700X, basically, if you want to put it in a more understandable way or a way that you can understand better, it's pretty much like an overclock 1800X with a voltage pump. So, at the, when I run it on standard profile, yes, it is that hot. So when I push the the fan based on the motherboard setting, push it to the to run it at the full performance, I get much lower temperatures. So, but overall it's good, the performance is good. Um, I do wish that the power draw and the temperature should, could be less. Speaking of power draw, this is what I've, uh, I get when I run a Cinebench and comparing the 1800X and the 2700X when it comes to power draw, the 2700X drains uh, around 20% more. That explains the heat and you can understand this means there's more power draw just to get that speed. So now back to the all important question, should you buy this processor? Well, if you are running an uh, old system, like say maybe even the AMD FX or the Intel uh, seventh generation processor, then yes, this is a very good purchase. Imagine that's the price at 1,559 is even lower than the Ryzen 7 1700 when it was launched. Now, but if you are already running, say, a Ryzen 7 1800X, then I wouldn't recommend going to it, to this one. If you are running a Ryzen 7, uh, let's say, a 1700, let's say if you, are, if you are not overclocking, you're running a stock Ryzen 7 1700, then yes, you will see performance uh, gain from this one. And um, if you are running an Intel Coffee Lake processor, let's say, like, like an i5 or even i7, then my take is that it's, it depends on what you are 
uh, you're doing if you're uh, playing games for example and you want to max out the frame rates i say intel still has the, up, the upper hand on that but as for uh, productivity i'd say this one is uh, great and if you're already running an 8th gen uh, this, this uh, intel coffee lake processor then i see no reason for you to upgrade just yet we we'll just wait another 12 more months next year i'm sure the the new ryzen 7 which is the third generation using the zen 2 architecture will be even better so all right that's it uh, for my review of uh, this ryzen 7 2700x performance wise it's better um, power draw it it draws a lot a lot more i would say and it runs hotter but the value the value of the the processor itself i can't believe that they are launching at this price of rm 1559 and it has an awesome cooler that not only performs well but looks great too um like i mentioned earlier i will have an additional video for the cooler itself and as you can see the cooler has rgb lights and guess what it's separated into three zones you have lights for the fan blade for the ring and for the amd logo so all right that's it for this video and i hope you enjoyed it uh, do remember to subscribe to my channel because i have more videos coming up for the ryzen 7 2700x and i also still have the ryzen 5 yes it's the ryzen 5 2600x which is also the second generation amd ryzen processor i'm sure you'll be interested on that one right so once again do remember to subscribe to my channel thank you for your support and i'll see you in my upcoming videos bye bye